Hey everyone, this is Kodemic and welcome to this episode of Abandoned History. Today we're going to be taking a look at Haunted Disneyland. No, I'm not quite talking about the ghosts who live up in the Haunted Mansion, but I'm talking about real urban legends, real stories of hauntings at Disneyland, from Mr. One Way who haunts Space Mountain to the ghost of Walt Disney himself haunting the Firehouse Apartment. Find out about these stories and more on this episode of Abandoned History. So if I were you, I would recommend not using the single rider line at Space Mountain unless you want to ride with Mr. One Way, that is. So Mr. One Way is a ghost who's described as a large man with red hair and a red face who supposedly rides with single riders on Space Mountain, so if you have an empty seat next to you, odds are that it's not actually empty. There's been kind of grainy f video clips of Mr. One Way supposedly riding out of the station on Space Mountain. Uh, I tried to look up instances, like reports of this. He's uh, said to have died in the 1970s. Uh, the first confirmed death on Space Mountain at Disneyland was from 1979. It was a woman who fell unconscious on the ride and unfortunately died a week later at the hospital. So I'm not quite sure if this one is really true or not, but again, it's a nice piece of Disneyland history. So look forward to riding with Mr. One Way at Space Mountain. So this next legend takes us to the banks of Tom Sawyer Island. In 1973, two brothers decided they wanted to stay at Disneyland after dark. So they took a raft to Tom Sawyer Island during the day and hid there well after the park had closed at night. The brothers then tried to swim to the banks of Frontierland in New Orleans Square to try to escape into the park, but the older brother didn't make it and drowned unfortunately. Cast members say to this day he still haunts the river in and around and you can see him rippling in the water. So while I can't exactly confirm that there's a ghost haunting uh, the rivers of America, I can confirm that this case actually happened where in 1973, a man drowned uh, while trying to swim across with his little brother from Tom Sawyer Island. In 1984, there was also another drowning in the rivers of America where a student on grad night stole a lifeboat from Tom Sawyer Island and tried to pilot it around the river uh, and he somehow drowned with that. So there have been two confirmed drownings in Tom Sawyer Island that I can find, so maybe one of them is haunting the rivers of America. So really this next story has to be one of the creepiest in my opinion. So it involves this, there's a woman in white who supposedly haunts Main Street and leads small children who are lost back to their parents at the lost and found or the main office as the story goes. In my research I was never able to find a woman in white who died on Main Street or anyone in general who's really died on Main Street since there's really not that many rides there and not that many ways to get killed I guess. So uh, I really doubt this one is true, uh, but if there is a woman in white who's uh, helping children get back to their parents, then uh, you do you and keep up the good work. So this next ghost has been called the ghost that prefers blondes. The story goes, in 1967, a teenager was killed on the People Mover, and that his ghost has haunted the attraction ever since, grabbing girl's hair who's blonde. I don't know if that's just if he had a blonde girlfriend at the time or what, so who knows why he likes blondes. Uh, and many people say that's the reason the attraction closed in 1995 was because they had so many guests complaining about this ghost harassing them on the attraction that they just couldn't do it anymore. Uh, well I kind of have to debunk that reason why the People Mover closed because a lot of the signs point to that being uh, budget cutbacks and the impending new Rocket Rods attraction. Uh, so let's see if we can find any actual incidents where someone died in 1967 on the People Mover. So I actually didn't realize how gruesome of a history the People Mover really has. Uh, I can confirm that in 1967, a 17-year-old boy was killed on the People Mover when he tried to jump between the two moving cars. There was a point where the tracks got so close together where the trains basically crossed each other, so maybe he thought he could make the jump and he didn't make it. I'm going to really kind of spare some of the gory details there. If you want to read about it, you can look it up. Uh, but yeah, the People Mover definitely had a very uh, a sad history. There was multiple deaths on there. So maybe that boy is haunting the People Mover attraction, or it's just another legend in Disneyland's abandoned history. So just how scary is the Haunted Mansion? So this story goes that in 1963, when the Haunted Mansion first opened, one of the first guests was a woman who rode the whole ride and then had a heart attack in the exit because she was so scared of what she had just seen, all the ghouling ghosts, the 999 happy haunts. 
so the ride closed until 1969 when it would reopen as a retooled version that took more of a comedy approach so no one would die from being so scared again. Now, I think I have to debunk this one right away. The Haunted Mansion, the facade anyway, was built in the early 60s, but they didn't actually have the ride system in, and it did not open until 1969, so I really doubt this actually happened, but it's still just a neat piece of history here. So our last tale for the day here brings us to the ghost of Walt Disney himself. So there's been sightings of Walt Disney all around the park. Fans are always on the lookout for him. Uh, there's one really famous video that came out a few years ago of Walt Disney supposedly walking around the uh, rivers of America in the New Orleans Square area. It was caught on a closed circuit TV camera and it really went viral on the news. Uh, but this story takes place at the Firehouse apartment. Now, it's a tradition with Disneyland cast members to leave the firehouse apartment lamp on as a tribute to Walt Disney, so he's kind of always watching over the, um, the park. So you can always look up into the apartment and see the glowing light and just be reminded that Walt Disney's always there watching over one of his greatest creations. But supposedly, before this uh, tradition started, a cast member went to turn off the light at night and left the room, only to find out when she returned that the light was turned back on. She heard a voice say, I'm still here. Now this is really creepy to think that, I don't know, Walt Disney turned on the light again and it's never been turned off since and uh, I don't know how truthful this is, I really doubt it is. I'm sure it's just something that's passed from cast member to cast member, but it's another one of those cool things to add to Walt Disney's legacy really. And again, he's not frozen, he's not buried under the castle or whatever. Uh, Walt Disney died in 1966 and I mean, I guess it's very possible if you believe in ghosts that this one is true. But yeah, just some really awesome tales and haunts from Disneyland here. Disneyland has such a rich history, but it also has a very tragic history too. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed this Halloween episode of Abandoned History. Don't forget to like, favorite, subscribe, and have a happy Halloween. And I'll see you guys real soon.